Hey cello players, Whoop. I'm gonna be running through a few of the harder spots in the St. Paul's Suite. A few things from each movement to give you some uh, ideas with which to practice as we get ready for our concert here coming up in a couple of weeks. So starting right away from the beginning, uh, starts in the tenor clef, we've talked a little bit about this. But basically, if you read this up a string, it'll be in pretty good shape. So that first note is D. I think we've done a pretty good job with this so far. But I'll just go slow motion once. We're gonna start in third position. Back to second. Up to fourth. Back to third. Back to fourth. Grab the harmonic. Second position with an extension. Back to first. Scoot up to second. Back to first. Third. To get this F. So under tempo, the whole thing is. at a full speed is and then we're off and running so that's the hard part for the first page um, square seven actually starts off basically the same way so you're not quite sure where to start take a look at square seven the first uh, Three measures or so are exactly the same, but in the bass clef, so you can kind of see where you're at. All right, moving forward. Uh, we have square eight, this pesante non legato uh, sound here. This is going to be easiest to play in first and third. So if you can find that F sharp with your, or sorry, C sharp with your first finger, you'll be in really good shape because here it is, that C sharp. A is right across. Here's your F sharp, third finger is G sharp, then right to the A. So three if you want, one, four, four, three, one. Then you just do that twice. And that's that section. So not too bad, especially if you can find it in third position. Next is our favorite, eight A. Right at that 2 4 molto pesante. Uh, again, easiest to do with a few different positions. We're going to start in half, that's the only way to get to the C sharp. I play that B with a 4. 1 1 1 3 4. 3 on the A sharp. I put my first finger on F sharp to get the G sharp again with 3. Back to half position. Now I go to 1 on the D sharp right away. 1 3 4. Again, one, one, three, four, to the uh, C sharp with one, then right across to A, and then I replace the three, which was the E sharp with the F, which is the same pitch. So I'll play the whole thing slow, and then I'll go to tempo. Or the E sharp and the F natural were exactly the same. Whatever it was, right? Millions of fingerings. Millions of fingerings. That's it for the first movement. I always that's pretty good. Uh, in the second movement, let's take a look real quick at square two. This is easiest, I think, done in second position, or sorry, fourth position. What am I talking about? Fourth position and first position. So it's center clef, that first note is an F. Play with a two in fourth position. The E with a one, back to first, four, two. Repeat it. The reason I love that fingering is because we can use it again, starting at the bass clef. We can put a two in fourth position on B flat. First finger on A, four, two. So it's 
exact same thing ring for both of those different pitch classes right there. <laughs> number two. Oh yeah, let's see. Um, there's a little bit of tenor clef after square five. Notice how square five starts on this F sharp. All right, that little thing. Where the tenor clef hits, F sharp again. All right, so just go between F sharp and G or three and four. So not too bad there. Then. Great ending. I love that movement. So good. All right, intermezzo movement three. A um, little bit more involved here. I'm looking at tempo one. This is uh, after square three, where we have this melody. This is tricky. It's a little up high, and we have to uh, we do something similar twice. But the first time we have a G sharp, and the second time we have a G natural. So we're going to start in fourth to a G sharp. A could be a harmonic. Whole step for B, which is three to one. Your G sharp should not have moved. So that whole chunk. Watch that one for intonation. It's almost like so la ti do 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 re ti sol solfege if your brain works that way. So that again, one, three, one, but that G should match your open G. Two is a harmonic, or you can put it down. And then the sixteenths are two, three, one, three, two, but we have a whole step between each finger. So if you find your harmonic, Right? Mary had a little lambs in there. So listen very carefully for that pitch. Whole section. The next tempo one is exactly the same. Two for one deal, practice it real well there, you'll have it after square six. And about does it for movement three. On to movement four, we have uh, the green sleeves. Oh, this part's so great. So uh, let me play it for you first uh, after square three where it's down nice and low. It's good to get it really solid here, get it in your ear, hear that pitch really well because we play it in the same key later but up in a higher octave. So here is after square three. singing like make it sound wonderful get in your ear as well because after square nine we have the same material but this time it is up an octave so <laughs> is the green sleeves portion. Start with the C in first position, why not two? I pop the fourth, two, four. Second finger on the harmonic. Reach for that whole step. Back to fourth. Can do it in second with an extension. Put a four on this F. A couple ways to get there. I kind of do the one, two, two shift. So you get to that E. So the whole chunk again. And 
then the violins continue while well, you get a little Dargason. Right, that little bit there. Uh, the next tenor clef section at the 3-4 is where we have the, uh, the, the B theme from Green Sleeves, if you will. starts on a high C. How do you find that C? First, play it in first position, A, 1, 2. Just hear that relationship between notes. And then, find your harmonic with 1. 1, 2, 3. Notice how close my fingers are there. Should sound the same. Remember that spot, because that's where we're going to start. So after you get that high C, then it's kind of like the section before. We're in fourth position. If you want to get fancy, you can put a fourth finger on that A to vibrate it. it sounds so good that way. Um, but yeah, if we can all nail that high C right there, you'll have just played a C, kind of find it like that, right? Find the A first and then put it down. You got two beats for it, so it should be enough time. And it continues on from there. You get some Dargasons at the end. Good to go. Uh, hopefully this is helpful. Happy practicing. We'll see you in rehearsal. And stop. Stop.